Good morning, everybody. So, I don't know about you, but today is our last day of school for the kids. Not for me. I'm going through the summer. But for the kids, today is the last day of school. So, we're going to get a nutrition shake before school. We're going to celebrate. And then we're headed off to the beach for a couple of days. Just me and my little compadre. So, if you have been watching social media, news, or however you get your source, then you have seen all the talk about the blood moon coming up. And um, I'm sure a lot of you will be watching that. Uh, I, might, I might take a peek outside and see what's going on. But what I wanted to talk about today is the biblical significance of the blood moon. I always knew that there was um, some form of significance, but I never truly 100% understood the importance of it. And historically speaking, I made a few little um, notes because I anybody that knows me knows I am not a history buff. I do not retain dates and times. Oddly, Biblical things I can retain, but just dates and times in history of things that have happened. I'm, it's never been my big, strong thing. But anyhow, um, the special appearances of the moon that are referred to as the blood moon, um, it's a series of four consecutive total eclipses of the lunar surface. Um, they're relatively rare, and while none occurred between 1582 to 1908 A.D., 17 have and will take place from 1909 to 2156. That's a scientific um, fact and a little bit of a prediction there based on pattern. Um, let's see. So... You might say, well, what does that have to do with the Bible? More notes. <laughs> notes, 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 notes. My brain's tired today. Um, so, Joel, a uh, prophet in the Old Testament, tells us in Joel 2.30, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Joel cites the blood moon as a uh, sign that uh, the coming of the Lord, that this is, this is happening before the coming of the Lord. Then again, Peter uh, tells us in Acts 2.20, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood become, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Then we go on in Revelation 6.12, John tells us, as I watch, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. He was talking about the seventh seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like a sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red and the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. So once again, so this is so far the third time that we're hearing about this blood moon that is a sign of Jesus' return. But then Jesus himself gives us a hint of this in Matthew 24 29 when he says the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken so Jesus himself talked about how the signs from the heavens from above this these are signs before he is to return before the son of man comes back now Obviously, no one knows exactly when uh, Jesus is going to return. Wouldn't it be great if we all did? Wouldn't it be great if there was a, a day on the calendar and we knew, hey, guess what? Um, this is the day, so and such day, so and such month, so and such year, 
Jesus is coming back. So you better make sure that you got all your laundry done, got all your bags packed, because you're going. Joking about that part. But anyhow, um, wouldn't it be great, you know, if you knew so that you could be certain that you were ready? But that is the whole reason that we don't know. Because God doesn't want us to, uh, it's human nature to procrastinate. I think every person alive has some form of procrastination in their personality. Now, a lot of us fight it, and I like to do things ahead of time, but there are times when I think, hey, I wish, I think I'm just going to sit here for a minute longer and then do it. I've still got another hour, so I can sit here 10 more minutes. So we do have procrastination in our nature, no matter how hard we fight it. If we knew the exact day that Jesus was coming back for us, there's a great many people who would just stay in a life of sin until the last minute and think they could just run in real quick and um, jump in there. You know, have you ever been in a, a traffic jam and there's, you know, maybe construction or wreck up here? So the lane going beside it where you're supposed to be to avoid it is full and it's backed way up. But then you're always going to have the wise guy that comes flying from behind you and gets in the lane where no one is because you're supposed to move over. Get in that lane, fly all the way up to where the construction or the wreck is happening, and then he wants to squeeze in in front of everybody else that's been doing what was right all along. So it's my personal opinion that is one of the very reasons <laughs> that God does not want us to know when Jesus is coming back because he wants us to serve him every day. He wants us to do what's right every single day. He doesn't want us to do as humans do and wait to the last minute and then try to crash in there, force your way on over into that lane of traffic. So I question sometimes whether or not uh, trying to study signs and things is, um, you know, going against what God even wants us to even study it. But then I think about um, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9, where it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So when you think of it like that, you think of the fact that, you know what? God doesn't want to give us an exact time because he wants us to serve him always. But he also doesn't want us to perish. He wants everybody to get to go. So I do believe that we are in a time right now where he is calling in earthly reinforcements. He is calling in angels. He is calling in people who were never feeling called to be evangelists before. He's calling them in to spread the word, to give every body a chance. So do I think the blood moon has significance? Yes, I do. I think it has significance because I think the coming of the Lord is going to happen soon. We don't know exactly when, but I know that we're living in the end days and he's warning us. It says he doesn't want us to perish. He's not trying to trick us, not telling us the day he's coming. is not some form of trick. It's because he wants us to be ready all the time. So what are you waiting on? Don't be a human procrastinator. Get in there, do what's right. And you know what you'll find out is that living for Christ and putting God at the center of your life is actually when your life actually comes together and starts feeling right. It's when things start happening for good. It's when all the pieces start coming together. It's when the puzzle finally starts to fit. All the pieces fit and, and you start seeing the bigger picture. So there's no reason to wait. Jump on in there and I'll see you guys tomorrow.